it's me, Mila Martinico, and welcome to OKish OK Advice. Is it the best advice? No, it's not. But, you know, I've been through things and um, I like to think I'm a therapist. So, you know, send me your questions. I'd love to answer them from, you know, just being me and not caring who's gonna judge me. Actually, that's a total lie. I cry. Um, so, <laughs> anyways, today's episode is all about um, teaching your kids about Jesus. Um, these are just a couple of questions that came in, and I want to say that this is the way that my family chooses to live. I don't care if you, um, well, I mean, I care if you're like a Satanist, but like whatever you choose for your family is your business. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to shove religion down your throat. Um, in fact, I pray against a spirit of religion because I believe in having a true and authentic relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And this is the way that I choose to live my life. So I'm hoping that in the, you know, air of respecting each other, that people don't come at me for the things that I believe, um, because I'm not coming at you. And I love to, you know, feed you good food and um, love on you. So um, I just wanted to like start that and let you know that this is what my husband and I have chosen for our children. This is the way that we learned that we choose to live our life. And if you don't, you know, like that, that's okay. Um, it's totally okay. So uh, basically, I also wanted to say that um, we have taught our kids mostly about Jesus by living as an example. Um, <laughs> I'm like trying to think back, in fact, Yesterday was mine and Matt's uh, 15 year wedding anniversary. And I was trying to think back, like, cause I'm trying to make like this post and be a good wife. And, um, you know, everyone's always like, oh, the love of my life, blah, blah, blah. I'm like thinking and I'm like, oh my God, all we've been through is like trauma. Like what is happening, you know? But I realized that in all of the crazy things that have happened to us, like, the one thing that I've seen is miracles and goodness. And even in all that adversity, um, God has truly made things that were meant to destroy us turn out for his good. So um, I think that our kids see that. And I really do think that they learn, you know, from example. In fact, uh, Matt and I were talking about this. So like, in our culture, it's totally normal for every other word to be the F word. It just is. Like it's Italian American culture. Um, and so that's something that I struggle with um, is my mouth. And I've probably struggled with my mouth my whole life because it's just been big. And um, <laughs> I kind of just, I just don't have a filter, okay? And, um, but I do feel like I've gotten better for sure. Okay. I've definitely gotten bigger or better, <laughs> bigger sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> dang, just outing myself. See, I have no filter anyways. Um, so God has given me Pearl who has absolutely no flipping filter, this child. And I mean, should I tell them about what happened? I gotta tell you guys what happened like a couple of days ago. So like we have like this little like homeschool group that meets like Wednesday mornings behind the restaurant in Bradley. And um, we all just kind of hang out, the kids hang out and whatever. So I go in to Bradley and Pearl's in there with her older sisters. And I'm like, hey guys, like pack up your schoolwork um, to the older kids. I'm like, we're gonna go um, head to the restaurant. And Pearl literally throws herself on the floor. You guys, like starfish. This place is packed. And she's like, you starve me. 
all day long and all night long and I hate the restaurant. I don't want to eat that food. I hate this place. You starve me. You never feed me. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like all you can think about is like, oh, there are seven people out there like, hello, DPS. Yes, straight to the restaurant. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh my God, this is so flippin' embarrassing. I looked at her and I was like, get up. You know, and I did my little countdown, like five, four, three, and she's like <gasps> crawling to the door. Okay, and I'm just like, take me now, Jesus. Like, I just, I can't, cause I can't pick her up cause I'm pregnant. And so I just grab her arm and like march her to the restaurant. And there were these old ladies right by the door with their little disapproving, like, you know, yeah, whatever. Anyways, I hope nobody leaves you in your diapers. Anyway, sorry, that was kind of judgmental, but like, my God, like it is so hard to be a parent, parenting yourself. And so, you know, we get back to the restaurant and I'm like, what is happening? And I tell Matt and Matt's like, Pearl, like, do you have to watch the things that you say? Because the things that you say have consequences. And, you know, and I told her, I said, if somebody went and called the police and what you said was lies, what if something, you know, they come back and they come and check that out and then you get taken away from us and we don't get to be your parents. I mean, listen, I know that that's like real dramatic, but you got to be dramatic to get to this kid. Okay. And she like looked at me and she said, I blacked out and my mouth kept going. She said, I don't even know what I said, mom. And I'm like, oh my God, like, why is this kid so flippin' relatable? Like how many times have I just like blacked out and been like, well, and these are the facts and these are the receipts and you know, whatever. So um, in both good and bad, your children will, they see what you do and they are little sponges and they do what you do. Now, I've never thrown myself on the floor and been starving, but I am a hangry girl. So, anyways, um, so Matt and I, all, that came with me talking about my mouth. And so Matt and I were talking about like, hey, like there's going to be a little baby here who is, you know, going to cuss if we don't knock it off. And it's probably not like the best thing um, for us to be doing that anyways, because we've been kind of feeling convicted about it. And then um, today, as we were sitting at lunch, I'm getting all these notifications from the filter on the phone, and it's telling me that um, she's cussing. Just to let you know, like I'm a real parent, I'm more hood than holy, and um, I'm just learning. So let's go to question number one after that. Um, Jesus, work, family, a life fulfilled. How do you find time to juggle it all? I don't. Um, <laughs> thank you for thinking so highly of me. Um, our life is beautiful and I'm so grateful, but you know, everyone that knows me jokes and says that we need a sitcom because it's literally insane. And sometimes I'm like, you know, in the middle of the night, I'm like, am I Bruce? No, not Bruce almighty. Who's the guy that, um, you know, he's like his whole life's a TV show. It's Jim Carrey, that movie. And like he finds out that his whole life was like a TV show. You, I know that there are people right now yelling and like knowing, but anyways, the Truman Show. That's what I feel like. I'm like, is this the Mila show? Like what is really happening? So uh, I don't find time to juggle it all. I've been very, very blessed. And I was thinking about how to answer this because I am not a type A person at all. I am disorganized. I am all over the place, but I like to use the word creative and I am a creative. So I have had to literally hire Riley. Oh, Matt's calling me. <laughs> Too bad, baby. Um, I've had to hire Riley in order for my restaurant to work. And she is my personal assistant, the catering manager. She does all the beautiful things on um, our social media. She runs this podcast. 
all of my dreams I literally had to pray for God to bring somebody to make my dreams come true because I'm not capable of doing that side of it. I probably could if I was a very dedicated person and good at doing that, but I'm not. So I've had to hire out and do that. So um, before I had the restaurant, I had to literally get help, friends. Like. I had to, well, I mean, I'm still in therapy, but like having therapy, working through, um, you know, child trauma, generational trauma, um, hiring a housekeeper to come every once in a while to help me. I surround myself with people who most of my friends are older than me. You know why? Because they've lived life and they don't judge me because they've also been a parent with a house full of clutter and you know freaking kids just god why are they so messy like everything i'm like oh my god can someone pick up after themselves like just all of it so and i think i do a pretty good job of being myself like when i'm around people you know i'm never the type of person who's like oh well, while we were yachting in Europe last summer, I'm like, yeah, right. I've never even seen a yacht up close. Um, the closest thing I've got is my butt getting stuck in a bathtub, but it's fine. So <laughs> I haven't even had caffeine. Ah! Um, anyways, I don't have time to juggle it all. I'm literally just doing my best, praying my way through it and um, trying not to screw up my kids by having open communication with them. And when I screw up with them, I apologize and I just tell them the truth, that I'm a real person and I have real feelings and sometimes I don't say the things that I need to say and I don't act the way that I should act. But at the end of the day, I love my kids and I love Jesus and I'm a work in progress. So, but I would really like to thank you for thinking that I have it together. I appreciate it. Um, question two, what are your tips, tricks for staying very positive and joyful, even in the face of very difficult circumstances or hurdles? I love you and your sweet family. Thank you. Um, I learned with uh, our daughter dying that I would tell myself, hey, get through the day, like be the best mom to Gia and Gemma. And then when they go to bed and Matt watches his like TV shows at night or whatever to unwind, go in the bathroom and cry. So I give myself time to lament. Um, I give myself time to feel sad. I give myself time to feel um, emotions. Because like, you know, a lot of people who are um, self-help, whatever, they're always like, emotions aren't real. Da, 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 da. And I've even heard people say like, emotions in church is not godly, but that's not true. Because we look at King David and he was all kinds of emotions. Just read a freaking Psalms, dude. That guy's so relatable and I allow myself to feel these emotions and I allow myself to be real with God and be like, Hey God, it's me. I feel like trash. This person's treated me like trash. Um, I responded like trash and take me out. I'm a dumpster fire, you know, like <laughs> I'm just like, this is just what it is, you know? And, um, in giving myself, time and uh, space to feel my emotions. And now I give myself a certain amount of time. Like, um, you know, I had a rough doctor's appointment. I called my three friends and was like, listen, you know, this isn't turning out how I wanted it to be. Like, I'm crying. I don't know, like, what do I do? And then I specifically call certain friends because I have friends who tell me, to suck it up and to pray about it. And then I have friends who will sit in a space with me and let me feel the emotions. So I called those people first. 
And then when I'm like, okay, my time of lamenting is over. So now I'm gonna call this friend. And like two days ago, I had this doctor's appointment. This is what they're saying. And she goes, all right, cool. So this is what God says. And this is what we're praying. And I'm like, yes, please slap me, beat me. Like, <laughs> I'm like, slap me with the truth. And um, that's kind of like how I am to myself. But now I have friends who help me do it. And I get to be that friend for people too. So um, I don't want anyone to listen to my podcast and be like, wow, this girl's a mess. I need to be her friend. I will also kick your butt if you need it. So like I'm there to hold space with you and let you feel the things and be human. And then we're going to just like flip that switch and go into this is what God says. And this is what um, spiritually can happen because this is what we believe. Anyways, so like with all these things, I do that. And then I find something to be grateful for because there's always things to be grateful for in your life. And um, I feel like when you can put in the effort to be grateful, it's almost like God uses that gratefulness as like, almost like, you know, when you're on a diving board and you like go on the diving board and you jump off and then you like hit it again and it's even bigger. I feel like there's like a diving board of gratefulness. And when you're grateful, even in the hardest circumstances, and you can say, look, this and this and this is happening to me, but this is what I have to be grateful for. I have my family. I have my husband. I have the restaurant. Like, you know, it's my ministry. I have, like, I'm alive. I have a house. Like, and you can sit there and have that gratefulness. That just opens up the door for God to be like, you know what? I like you. I like that you're grateful. I like that you're not going to let these circumstances take you down. And you know what? Let's go, girl. Uh, this is basically, yeah, I try to stay positive. And, you know, um, there's so much to be grateful for even when things really suck. And, um, yeah, the only way to be great is be grateful. So, not that I'm great, but that's an affirmation that's on my mirror. So, <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to send me all your questions so that I can answer them in the most weird way possible. And don't forget that I love you. And subscribe, follow, like Mama Mila's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Dang, there was four of them. I had to get them all out there. Um, and don't forget, please leave me a good review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify because your girl's about to go on maternity leave and maybe I can actually make money off this. So that would be great. Um, I love you. I'll feed you. I'll talk to you. And I'll see you soon. Tanti bachi.